<laughs> Matt Ishmael. Yeah, Matt A. Sir. Good boy, Matt. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Ma you. Thank you. Hey, one T, right? One T. But it's not pronounced any differently. No. Matt. <laughs> hey, thank you for joining us. Oh, glad to be here, man. How old are you? 44. Man, hell yeah, Let's dude. Go. Congratulations. Because uh, I saw the Player 15 group promo, which pretty much talked about you being the guy on the Michigan State Spartans basketball team who wasn't scared to be there early and not scared to be the one to mop up the floors late. Every once in a while, you just need somebody on a team who's willing to do anything for the team, and you're hoping to inspire others to buy in, basically. This is the group that owns the Phoenix Suns, the Player 15 group. Is that accurate? Yeah, it's basically just a... Basically, bringing everyone together. We got the Suns, we got the Mercury, we got the G League. So, bringing everyone together, Player 15 is kind of encompasses it all. In these videos of you diving on the floor, oh, and awesome. fighting, and then mopping up afterwards, it's like you're the perfect guy to be owning a team because I think a lot of us is that they, I can help you with that. <laughs> yeah, the a lot of us players. We always hope that a player will end up in ownership role so that then they can make some changes from a player's point of view or from our perspective. So I want to let you know, even though you're not in our sport, we're very appreciative of what you've done and what you've accomplished and how you've gone about doing your business. Oh, thank so you. congratulations, I and appreciate we appreciate it. you. Oh, yeah. I love it. All right, so, let's talk about this now. I'm having the best time. It's, it's, it's great. How has it been being an owner? A little bit different than what you expected? You know, more fun, awesome, every part of it, because I'm a fan, really. I'm a fan that owns a team now. And so now I get to do all the things that, as a fan, I always wanted the owner to do. And just whether it's give, getting TV or trading for players or just being involved, like, I love it, man. It's been the best. So you bring in Kevin Durant. Obviously, that's a big time move. Then Kevin Durant, Devin Booker, they're kind of the crew. Uh, we're planning on winning, right? That's what we're in this week. <laughs> that's the goal. That's the plan. Win the championship. That's okay. what we're trying to do. Okay. So speaking of championships, Michigan State has not won since when is it, Foxy? 2000. Okay. Jeez. Were you on that team? I was on that team. Hell yeah. I took the last shot in the game, missed the layup, but, you know, <laughs> we won. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't matter. But Foxy still calls it January, February, February Izzo, Izzo, April. Is that a fair? He's the best. Izzo is the best, not only a great coach, but the best guy. But, you know, watch this team. You even watch this team right now. They're not even ranked. You watch out for them. Final Fours in Phoenix this year, too. Basketball Ooh. center of the world coming up. You still follow along with Michigan State as much? Oh, I love it. Coach Izzo is my guy, and the players there, I'm, I love watching them. So you found a United Wholesale Mortgage. UWM, mortgages, yep. UWM. Were you a part of NIL with Michigan State before you owned the Phoenix Suns? or? Uh, not really. You know, not really much on the NIL stuff, but more just I gave some money back to the school, helped them build a football facility, just being, being doing, doing the right thing, giving back. So tell me how you get to the Phoenix Suns, because that feels like pretty far away. Do you have any connection with the Phoenix area? Because we love that city. So nice. Phoenix is like the greatest city. We're yeah, big love fans. It. No, I love it. No, I, did, I had no connection there. Um, wanted to be an NBA owner, dreamt of it. Um, Phoenix was like, I mean, could you ever own a Phoenix Suns? I mean, that's in a, you want to spend some time in the winter, that's where you want to go, right? Absolutely. And so I live in Michigan still. That's where my kids are. That's where I live. And I'm out in Phoenix all the time now. Suns in Mercury. I'm having the best time with it. And no connection originally, but now now I'm, I have a house there. I'm there all the time. I was there I was there at that other night, uh, Wednesday. I'm there almost all, not all the games, but a lot of them. Yeah, well, I would want to live there. I think I'm probably going to live there, actually. Yeah, I hope. One day. I, I sure hope. It's so beautiful. It's cool, and it has everything. It does. They're Hockey team sucks. It's the worst in the league by a mile. <laughs> the Cardinals trying to figure it out. Kyler's a dog. Yeah, but coach. the Phoenix Suns are the, the team out there. Do you feel the energy? Do you uh, feel the city of Phoenix behind the Suns? Energy's fantastic. The Suns fans are the best. I mean, honestly, we got the best fans. And, man, the energy out there, we, we, we've never won a championship. So that's what we're trying to do. We've never done it there in Phoenix, and we're going to go win it this year. Okay, so we I watch Semi-Pro, you know, and i seen Jackie Moon kind of figure it out. Mm -hmm. The owners' meetings – what are those like? How much say do you guys have? How much gets done? Like, what it, what you thought it was going to be as an owner versus what it actually is. Is there anything whenever it comes to, like, making decisions about the actual game or rules or free agency that is kind of blindsided you? Or do you feel like you have actual say in the league? In no, I feel, you know, Adam Silver, I think, is an amazing commissioner. I think I know you guys had him here the other day. He's, he's just on top of everything. He's in the weeds of everything. The other owners, like, you're there. You're talking about things. You're talking about new new rules. And we voted on some different changes. So it's, it's actually more in the weeds and I thought it's not as like just just whatever happens happens. You're actually doing it, talking about it, you know, trying to figure out making changes to make the league better. It's for the fans. How do you make this thing better? Um, so it's been pretty good. I've only been in a year, so I'm learning. Uh, I'm the I'm the young guy, the new guy on the on the block, but I'm learning and enjoying it. Who'd you get into a fight with? I forget that. There's Jokic. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't get in a fight with him, but you know. 
<laughs> he he kind of pushed me a little bit, but we, we're, we're good. We're good. Yeah, I mean, he probably didn't think that the guy this young looking is the actual owner. Connor's got a question for you, Matt. Yeah, the other part of the NBA, I feel like that happens a lot, and it's happened a lot in Phoenix, is when you don't win the championship, how hard it is not to just blow up the team. And obviously you haven't blown up the team per se, but when guys come and go, like Chris Paul, DeAndre Ayton, after every season, is it hard not to just be like, okay, how do I how do I do this? Like, how, do I get rid of some guys? Do I? How long does that kind of like encapsulate your life when you guys haven't you know made it all the way? You've gone to the finals, but you know won the trophy itself. Yeah, you know you're evaluating it all year. So every player, every coach, everything we're doing strategies, and it's trying to build the best team. We just made some a trade at the trade deadline. We had some great players. We made a trade. And we got Royce O'Neal. We we think we upgraded our team. We're trying to win the championship. Like I said, I'm I'm a fan. What the fans want, they want us to win. Yeah. And we're going to try. It doesn't mean we're always right. We're not going to win every year. We always know that. But we're trying to win every year and try to do everything we can. So after the season, but throughout the whole time, like how do we make our team better? How do we compete with the best teams? Obviously, Denver's the champs from last year. How do we go out there and hopefully beat them? Are you hands-on? with Because you know basketball, obviously. Played oh, college. Yeah. I mean, there's not a lot of owners that played collegiate basketball at Michigan State or won a national championship. Oh, yeah, I assume you're pretty hands-on with the whole operation? Every detail. I mean, that's how I run my mortgage business. I run the basketball business. Every detail from the trades I made with the women's team. We just made a great trade for Clea Copper. On the women's side, the Mercury, like the NBA involved with everything. I got great people around me. They actually helped me do all the stuff, and I have to give my thoughts to You too. just want to know about it. Oh, yeah. I'm very involved with it. Like I said, you got to talk. I mean, I, I, I can watch a little film. I'm not, I'm not James Jones, my GM, but I'll watch Beast. it and talk to him and strategize. But I love being involved with it because I love basketball. I know the game a little bit. But if you want to be great at something, you got to be all in. And I'm all in with the Phoenix Suns and Mercury. Are you worried that the Indiana Fever are about to just take over the WNBA because Caitlin Clark's coming to town? Sorry about it. Yeah, no, I, we, we, we wanted her. She'd be great. You know, I wish we could have had her, but... Uh, they're going to be good. She's an unbelievable player. You see her last night? Oh, I mean, yeah. Oh, I yeah. I mean, she is. She's sick. Stud. She's she is sick. phenomenal. I mean, I, I, I love watching her anytime. I'm going to. Big 10 girl. Yeah, Big 10 girl. I wish she was coming out. She's coming to Phoenix, man. She's we, not. I nope. know. <laughs> She's a fever. Okay. I, she, well, these Iowa Hawkeyes fans need to shut up, too. Last night, as they're celebrating her breaking the record, they're like, one more year. One. I had to mute the TV. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I had to mute TV. I'm like, I, she's coming to Indianapolis. Yeah, her brother mentioned, hey, good luck with your future. And he threw in WNBA. So if her brother's saying that, he knows, hey, Caitlin's done what she set out to do. Time to set records in the WNBA with the Indiana fever, baby. But I do appreciate the fact that the Hawkeyes fans understand what they have in Caitlin. <laughs> yes. Clark. Like, yes. they are showing up. She's, sell she's box office. She's unbelievable. Every unbelievable. arena she is selling out. Yeah. And then obviously, last night with history on the line she's not even nervous not tight you know like when Steph Curry was coming up upon the the three-point record mm -hmm. like there were some shots not falling that Steph oh, normally yeah. knocked down then once he got the record it feels like he like had a sense of relief she came out boom boom Buckets. boom first Killed eight it. points Unbelievable. and then she goes for 49 it's like she's an absolute killer now whenever you and obviously you play college ball you're a player 15 we know what that means okay with the whole story you told when you're around like Kevin Durant, Devin Booker, and whenever you're trying to find guys for your team, are you trying to find like killers? Like, are you trying to find, like, what is the, you know, Absolutely. how do you get over the hump? Like, Absolutely. in your eyes. Like, well, Kevin Durant and Devin Booker are killers. They, these guys, their mentality, I love being around them. And they're killers and they're amazing players too. But just seeing these guys, like, yeah, I, like, my DNA, Michigan State basketball, like I like guys that play tough. We're, we're, we're a different, we want to have a build a culture in Phoenix. And so we look for those kind of guys. That's one of the big reasons we're for Royce O'Neal. I think he fits in like that kind of mentality. But honestly, Booker, Durant, Beal, Nurkic, like I love Nurkic the way he plays. He's big, strong. This guy's a monster down there. And uh, we got Grayson Allen, who's tough, plays the right way. Like, we got we got a team. Well, I like Grayson Allen's guy trips everybody. Yeah, that's right. right. Now what he does? No, not right. anymore. No, no, that was no, a long no, time no, ago. No, this guy's a great guy. I'm telling you, man, you'd love him. You would love him. Uh, I, yeah, well, as he was tripping people, I was like, this guy is awesome. Yeah, <laughs> when they were playing in L.A., actually, uh, Emma Stone was leaving the game, and she said bye only to Grayson <laughs> Allen, and the entire bench was like, "What the hell just happened?" Absolute dog. Yeah. So what? what's next for you? What's that? Obviously, you're on the Suns. You got UWM. Uh, any other ventures that you'll get yeah, into? No, I just want to try, to try to win. You know, try to win with the Suns, the Mercury, try to win championships, be involved with it. I love it. I'm in the weeds of it. My mortgage business, I run it all day, every day. That's what I'm doing most of the time. But basketball business, I got three kids, and I coach my kids sports on the weekends. It's the best. God, how do you have enough time? How do you have the energy? You how make, do you have the juice? You make the time. You make the time every day. And so I got the young kids, coach them, coaching flag football, basketball, trying to win those games too. I don't care Damn. if it's nine-year-old football, we try to win championships. Are we smacking the wood? Uh, oh, we, 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 we compete. You know, we try to compete and win every day. Are you up like 4 a.m.? Have like a... 4 a.m. Yes. Suit and tie every day in my office. Not here today, but suit and tie every day, 4 a.m. in the office. Pontiac, Michigan, grinding. 
Are you kidding me? No. That's what I've done for 20 years. How much are you worth? You don't, you, do you look that up? I don't look it up. I just did. What is it? 8.1 billion. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty damn good. Okay, so $8.1 billion. <laughs> Coming and going, depending upon the day. You know, however that whole thing goes. You're in Pontiac, Michigan still. You're coaching all three of your kids' stuff. Oh, yeah. You're hands-on with everything in the Phoenix Suns and the Phoenix Mercury. And you're still running your mortgage business. Love it. How every, long is it? Is it sustainable forever? Oh, uh, man, I, I got energy. I love it. You wake up excited. You were excited every day. I, I love it. I love what I do. Um, the kids are most important. My mortgage business, the basketball businesses. I don't have much time for anything else, but I'm loving it. When do you, do you work out? Do you have like No, a, I don't. I, look at me. I don't look like you. I'm, I'm just. No, I, I'm shape. on science. I'm, I'm taking science. <laughs> yeah, you, you got to share with me. I need to figure it out. I'm, I'm not looking that good anymore. Hey, there's some stuff you can just take. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I'm not saying he's on anything, <laughs> but he's working out heavily with his son, too, as a bodybuilder. But there's some stuff that'll get you. All right. I need, I need some of that stuff. I don't think you need it. You're doing okay. All yeah. right. Were you, so, I don't want to say self made because everybody has help, but like, how'd you get in the mortgage business? Yeah, started, the, you know, joined the company as 12th person. 12th person, originally my father, who's a lawyer, started the company, a side business. I joined as the 12th person. Now we have 7,500 people. I bought the company 10, 15 years ago uh, when we had a couple hundred people building it. And so, yeah, I don't know you call it self-made. If you don't give self-made, give credit to my dad. My dad's an amazing man. I love giving him credit, anyone credit. I'm just grinding every day. Yeah, you're up at 4 a.m. every day. What? In the office, suit and tie. In the office at 4 a.m.? Yeah, not, not getting up. 4 a.m., I'm in the office. <laughs> what time are you? So what, that's 3.15? 3.30, 3.29, you know. Do you I'm hit sure. snooze ever? No, I don't, I don't need the alarm. I just get up. Oh, okay. my just get God. Up. I just go. Oh, you're an alien. <laughs> Psychopath. <laughs> Sounds like it. So what time do you go to sleep? 9.30, 9.45. Now with the Suns game, it's throwing me off a little bit. So now the Suns play late. So now at some of those days, I don't get into the office at like 6.30. But, you know. Slacking. Three-hour time difference, two-hour time difference, depending on the time of the year. Golly. You're a weapon, dude. <laughs> have you always been like this? This has been 20 years. I've been doing it for 20. I, I'm not that smart, so I have to outwork everybody. That's how I built my whole business. I've just got to come up, grind, outwork everyone. Same thing with basketball. I'm learning it. You know, I got I got to outwork everyone. I'm, I'm not the smartest guy. Do you still play a little? Bit? I can play. I can play. Still got a jumper? Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. You still play pickup in Pontiac? Yeah, I, I got I play with some buddies every once in a while. So I play at Michigan State. A bunch of my old teammates play uh, work at UWM with me, my mortgage company. So we play on Tuesday nights at my house sometimes. Uh, have a little game. So we got some NBA players, and I got guys that can't make a layup. I got my kids sometimes play. It's a heck of a time. <laughs> How are you doing? Are you doing pretty good? I'm okay. You know, I can I can make some shots when the game's on. Like we play, we screw around, and then you know, eating gummy bears and stuff during the games. But when the game gets on the line, it gets competitive for the last two or four points. Any of those Michigan gummy bears, or just no? Tony's <laughs> <laughs> got a question bears, for you. I, 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 I had a question. And I apologize. I don't know. I know. I don't know all of the details, but I think last year you left Bally's, I think, and then you decided to go with all the local games on your own network. Is that that correct and I and I think you did it for free is that correct for all the for all the local how's that working out is that it was that great been a, it's been a great decision for you well, moving the, forward? how much heat did you get for that too yeah well so I, I got all love from the fans right because I because they used to have to pay so the way the NBA works is you you give your media rights you pay to and they pay you Bally's or Diamond Sports pays you 30 35 a lot of money and then they, they sell it to the fans and then I, I said we're done with it give it to the fans for free they should not be able to watch the game it's their team it's not my team so we gave it to them all for free no money coming our way on that. We we split the advertising, so we make some of the money back. But it's a it's the right thing to do. Like it, like it's not my team; it's their team. And like I, the way I've run my business my whole life is money follows success. Go do the right thing, do a successful thing, put a winning product out there. We'll make money down the road. And so it's been great, and the fans love it. And I think more NBA teams will follow it as well. Um, I think Ryan Smith, who I was on your show recently, he he just did the same thing. And like you'll see, this is going to be a new trend. No more of this pay to play, pay to watch. Like just put the games on TV and let's watch them. Yeah, if you build it, they will come. You know, Absolutely. that's obviously from the great baseball, but it's like a life, too. Yeah, yeah and if not, you know what? The owners, we're all doing okay. We, we, like, <laughs> yeah. five, what was that? Like, uh, $8.1 <laughs> billion. Dollars. So it's not about <laughs> it's not about money. Nobody cares about the owner. Like, someone's like, oh, your luxury tax bill went up. I'm like, no no fan cares how much I pay in luxury tax. They care if we win. And my job is to do what they want. And it's not to try about how much money I make or how much money. Like, let's just go talk about winning. Well, you talk about if you build it, they will come. I think you just put $100 million into the Phoenix Mercury's uh, practice facility. Only one in the WNBA. Is that accurate? Yeah, the best of the class. We want to take, you know, we're inv you invest in something and things happen good. You know, we, and we made some great trades. Like, 
We're gonna, we're putting money. WNBA is great. I don't think if you saw Kate and Clark, like the WNBA is gonna gonna take a step up in the next 10, 15 years. You watch it. I'm excited about it. When she comes here, the, the, oh yeah, she'll oh, yeah. sell out. She'll sell out our arena because not just Indianapolis people who have been fans of the Fever for a long time. Everybody in the Midwest will travel to come watch her. For sure. With the way the Aces have been playing, with the way New York Liberty's been playing, and I, I assume the Mercury are going to get in. If, gonna, you're, if you're building a $100 million practice facility, I assume free agents are going to want to come there as well. Absolutely. How come not all people with money understand that? So, like, <laughs> it feels like there is, and I don't want to say I'm at war with olds, but I am. I, I kind of am in our industry. Okay. And there's always like a cut corners, save money, cut costs type situation, as opposed to like, hey, if you invest money in something, the return will be bigger. As opposed to the little bit of money that you can make off of saving money, if you actually invest money into something, the returns will probably come back bigger. Why do some people that are in positions of power and have money, why did that become almost a train of thought for a lot of people? Yeah, I really have no idea because the truth is people jump over dollars picking up pennies all the time, doing the wrong thing, thinking, mm. cut costs. How about you just go do the right thing, invest, spend time, spend money? Money follows success every single time. And so, like, yeah, too many people, I, I guess, you know, like I have a different mentality. I'm, I run a business all day. A lot of people invest and, like, watch things. Like, I'm just like, do the right thing. Good things happen. It's been successful for me. It's successful for a lot of people. And uh, I think more and more people are going to see that going on. Are you on. a business major? Business major, Michigan State. Go green. Go white. Go white. Let's do it. Right. Do you feel racist when you're saying the second half of it? <laughs> <laughs> I feel supportive. Michigan State. I, yeah, because I'll put Foxy in a spot. You know, we were down in Houston. Uh, we were the only white people in the entire place. Yep. And uh, we were walking through and just right in the middle of that thing, I go, uh, hey, Foxy, go green. You know, he responds with a go white. <laughs> and I just bail out of there really quickly. <laughs> but Michigan State has a lot of great things. Mm -hmm. Boy, there's a lot of headlines made about Michigan State going the opposite direction. Certainly. I think we need to talk about you being a Michigan State product a lot more than we do. That's on us, Fox. And that team he was on, like that molded specifically the area of Lansing, but the state of Michigan. Everyone wanted to play basketball for Tom Izzo. And quite honestly, everyone wanted to be Ishbia, that last guy on the bench, the gritty guy, the hardworking guy, the whole thing. So that's why I played basketball my whole life because of that. And everyone in the Lansing area, same kind of thing. You fathered Foxy. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah, I'll take it. That's a nice word. I appreciate that. I'm proud to be part of it. it Izzo's the best. Michigan State's great. Like, we got some great Michigan State players in the NBA, too. We got some good things, but just good people there. Fox, you got a question for Matt? Yeah, Matt. I mean, I'm going to follow up on that. You're very successful. Your business is very successful. You still live in the state of Michigan. I love the great state of Michigan, but there, I, I'll say it for a fact, there's a lot of better places to Whoa, live. Whoa, Foxy. Why? Jeez. Just why? Yeah, that's, that's real. What the yeah. hell? It, yeah, I, I love it. So I love it. It's where my kids are. It's, I, what? It's negative 10 degrees. It's cold. Yeah, oh, it's yeah. Cold. Oh, very cold. The sun's in Mercury. I go out to the Phoenix quite a bit. I get oh, out there. Oh, got a business bit. trip, babe. Got, I got a business trip. I'm out of town. <laughs> I'm going to go spend time there. But uh, I love Michigan. Great people in Michigan. Great people. Uh, Spartans are about an hour 15 away. Got great. I got my kids there. My business is there. Pontiac, Michigan. We're grinding every day. And so just trying to be the best that we can do. But uh, yeah, I, I, I get it. Like, I'm, I'm in Arizona a lot nowadays. I enjoy it. Yeah, it's very smart. Makes um, sense. You said your business degree from Michigan State. And do you, are you a good card player? I can play cards. What are the hobbies? Golf? No, no, never. Yeah, because you live in Michigan. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's five Golf hours. I've got five hours to do that. So so long. Yeah. So it's, cards, hobby? No, no. I don't, you know, I don't know. Really, coaching my kids. I don't. I don't have. I'm not that much fun. I, I gotta hang out with you guys more. This is more fun hanging out with you guys. No, this Shoot around weird. the Thunderdome. I gotta be around you guys. Well, listen. This is it. You don't let us make you dumber. We need more yeah, people like true. you. <laughs> yeah. Any other aspirations going forward? Are you gonna run the presidency or anything like that? No, man. Just gonna. We gotta win. We gotta win a championship. That's I'm trying to win his sons. Yeah. yeah. And trying, Mercury. That's all we're trying to do. How, how did the uh, sports book operate inside the Suns right. Arena go? Has that been going well? And has there any been like any backlash? And do you think other states like Indiana for example who's legal online sports gambling do you think they're going to start putting in sports books all over? I think so. I think it's just engaging for fans. I think fans like it. So we have it in the FanDuel thing in our, in our arena. It's been great. People are there before the games. Like They enjoy that and so it's all about the fans. Basketball it's entertainment. We, what's best for the fans? What makes it more engaging for them? And I think that does it. You know, It's not a huge thing either way Like I'm not, I, don't, I don't never really bet on sports I'm not really my, into that thing but at the same time fans do and they enjoy it. Now they, they care more and they enjoy it it's cool. Dude. Steve Ballmer uh, built that new place for the Clippers. And the first press conference, he said, toilets. We got more <laughs> toilets than anybody else because we want people not in lines to take pee. We want them in their seats watching the team. Like, how much do you have to balance? Like, we went down to the Atlanta Hawks. Atlanta Hawks have this beautiful setup. 
where like people are hanging out. You get to go to the bar, the bar. food. There's not even like seats. You're just kind of standing. But I found myself not really paying attention to the game, but I would certainly go back to a game. How much do you have to balance like, all right, we want our environment to be a home court advantage, but also we want people to know that when they're coming to one of our games, it's going to be a great time. Is that something you're hands on with? Yeah, very hands on with it. You know, I'm real, every time out, there's got to be entertainment because you know what? Husbands, wives, kids, not everyone loves the basketball game. So they're there for the whole entertainment. So I think making the arena a great place for people. Now you got to have the home court advantage. You got it. And luckily in Phoenix, we got the best fans. They're all in They're, they're they're going crazy. It's all good. But you want to make it fun for people. Some, not everyone wants to watch every aspect, every minute of the game. They might want to go to the fan duel part. They might want to go grab a drink or a cocktail. They've got to create some cool kids zone. So we try to do a little bit of everything balancing that. But uh, you definitely want to have them watching the game and cheering on your team. How about that gorilla you guys got? <laughs> Dog. He's man. a weapon. That gorilla is a weapon. Oh, yeah, he is. Do you drink anything? Yeah, I'm vodka guy. Great goose. Nice. Oh, Tito's. okay. Yeah. What, with what? Sprite? Soda? Lemonade. Lemonade. I'm, I'm not, it's, it's, not, it's not really tough. I'm not that tough. But vodka lemonade. been doing it my whole life. Wow. No, the, hey, the fact that you still drink vodka lemonades, I think we like. Respect. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. 40 for summer drink. I'm doing it. You know? Absolutely. Tone's got a question yeah, for Yeah, I do. It, I was going to ask about with the, the Fandle being in there, and, the, and you talked about how the fans like it. Have you heard anything from the players like, hey, fans are heckling me because I didn't hit my point total night or something <laughs> like that? Have you heard, have heard any of the negatives from the player side or anything like that? Ne never once. Okay, never okay. once from one of my guys about that stuff or get, like just never really about that stuff. You hear some stuff about that, like fantasy stuff, but I really haven't heard it from our guys yeah. at all. Um, they love it. I think our, our guys love that fans are engaged mm -hmm. and care. You know, sometimes we're on the road, you get some crowd, some fans yelling at, my guy, at our guys, but uh, not, not really on the fan duel stuff or on the bet, sports betting stuff, at least that I've seen. Do okay. you talk to your players? All the time. Okay, the time. so you take their feedback. Hey, what can we make better? How do we make better? Has any player, like when Kevin Durant comes over and you have a conversation with him, do you ask him, like, hey, what has it been like in some other places that maybe we don't have? Is that happening? The, every like, How can I run a business if I don't talk to my players? I talk to every player on my women's team and my men's team. Talk to them all the time. I text with them. I have dinner with them. I'm, I'm around these guys and gals all the time. I'm learning to get better. And so do I ask them? Of course I ask them. I, I tell people when they came from other teams, like, hey, what do they do better than us? Because we're going to do better than that. Like what? Oh, we like team dinners on the road. Okay, let's got. We got it. How do we make the hotels better? What can we like? I'm trying to be the best. We're trying to be the best franchise in all of the NBA, all of sports. Like, how do we do that? We got to invest. You got to find out the players actually know. They they've been oh at this place we did this or hey I love this. Like, take care of your guys. Do the right thing. Take care of your girls. Like, that's what we're trying to do. And so. Every detail I'm involved with. Do you think because you're an athlete that that's quite an advantage over everybody else? You know, because you're so. like a suit. You are a suit. Yeah. And you're in a suit. 4 a.m. <laughs> 8.1 billion. But yeah. like being an athlete, I think is a weapon mm -hmm. uh, that the suits don't have. I think it differentiates because I, I've been there. I've been in the locker room. I've been in. Like, I've been part of that, and they understand that I've done it. I'm also younger. I'm a little closer to a lot of their age. I'm thinking the youngest owner in sports. It's like. I, I've been there with them. I've played with them. Kevin Durant's you know, eight, nine years younger than me, so it's not like we're that far apart. But the thing is, like, I know what it takes because I've seen it and I want to be involved. I've never done it in the NBA. I've never done it in the NBA. You know who's done it? Some of my players. My head coach has won any championships. So ask them. Like, I don't need to reinvent the wheel. What works? What doesn't work? Let's try to do more of that. Let's build a new film room. Okay, we got you. Like, what can I? My job is to be the best owner. Their job is to be the best player, best coach, best medical trainer. Like, we all have to play our roles, and that's what that's even what Player 15 is about. Like, do your role. Be the best at it. It's all about team. Uh, has there been a price of something that's come across your desk? You're like, I'm not paying for that. <laughs> like, I feel like I'm getting ripped off. No. No, not not if it's going to help us win. So I say, hey, listen, I like we did the trade deadline. They said, oh, it's going to add to the luxury tax. I said, is Royce O'Neal going to make us better? Yes. Okay, then what are we talking about? No fan's going to be like, good job saving money in the tax bill. Like, <laughs> yeah. no, 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 like yeah. Ishbia is really great. No, they don't care. They want to see a championship team out there. Let's do what it takes. Do and you feel obligated because you're new to the team? Like you got to earn almost credibility with the fans. Uh, I'm going to be doing the same thing in 40 years. You'll be talking to me about the same stuff. Like, no, I'm not, I'm not trying to do it because I'm new or I'm old. Like, I just want to do the right thing. Like, I'm doing what the fans would want. I, we've all done it. Like, oh, if I was the owner, I would do this. Like, we all played fantasy stuff. Like, like now I am the owner. Now I'm going to do what the fans want, and winning is what they want. Damn. What have you learned about the NBA about building a championship team that maybe you're still trying to find with your squad? Well, I think the biggest thing you learn is health. Right, like I, I, I took for granted that you know these guys got the, the, humans. The, yeah, they're human beings, and you know you get hurt, and like you got it. So with the medical stuff and making sure that they feel comfortable and that we do all the right things to get the players playing, because I think you got to build the best players, build, build the best team by getting the best players, but you got to make sure that they get play. And so being healthy is a big part of it. We started the year with some unhealthy players, we weren't as healthy, and then the last. 25, 30 games, we've been one of the best teams in the league, like we expected. And so health is a big part of it. Um, but 
putting the guys in position to succeed too. It's like any business, like team with the best players usually wins. If you treat them the right way, you have the right vision and you work hard. Yep. I'm happy we got you. Uh-huh. I'm happy the United States of America is great. Yeah, I kind of wish he was in the NFL, but whatever. Yeah, you have oh, asp- yeah. no aspirations yeah. to NFL? Yeah, I love that. I, NFL, I, I, I originally bit on the Denver Broncos. I was trying to get in that. The Walt, Waltons uh, beat me. I, I didn't get that one. Yeah, but That's not going to happen. You got eight. They got 50. Yeah, that, that, I, I realized that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, NBA is my thing. WNBA is my thing. I'm a basketball guy. I wouldn't rule out NFL one day. But like NBA and WNBA, like, I got a lot of work to do to learn. Now, you get along with all the other owners there? Yeah, most of them. Yeah, they, we, we get along pretty good. They're, they're, they're all good people. They've all been really welcoming. Most of them, huh? You've had a couple? No, no, they've all been great. They've all <laughs> well, been great. No, no, no. Uh, a couple. Do you know the NFL owners? Tepper in particular? I don't know. I don't, I've never met him. I know a lot of the NFL owners. I, I know the, I've met a lot of them. And they've been, honestly, the, this is one thing about sports that I learned. The owners, to give credit, NBA owners, NFL owners, MLB owners, any, like, they have been great. When I was trying to buy a team, like learning about it, they would welcome me in, have lunch with me, talk to me, strat- like nice. they, they were like over the top cool with me. They didn't know me for anybody. I give a lot of credit to the NBA, NFL, like, and Adam Silver, Roger Goodell. Like, these guys, they care about the sport so much and the team. Like, it was better than expected on that. The owners I'm- have been better than you expect. They share. They're like, I called one of the owners the other day, like, hey, this, hey, do this with your team. Like, we're teammates except for the 48 minutes on the court. How much did you get the Suns for? Four billion. And you just have to pay for that, or you get a mortgage out? <laughs> <laughs> I, no, I wish there was a mortgage. No, no, you actually wire out the money. Like, it's gone. Minus four. Just watching that. <laughs> Jeez, yeah. See you later. All right, now we got a team, though. Well, I'm That's happy awesome. that you're an owner during our existence. Yeah. Good luck out in Phoenix. Good luck with everything else. And uh, you're the man, dude. Oh, Your energy that. just made me feel yeah, better. Seriously. I love, I love being with you guys. This is the best, man. I'm, like, I'm going to come back. Well, you're in Pontiac, Michigan, so... Yeah, Come on, whenever you want. Let's go. Very man. Close. Ladies and gentlemen, owner of the Phoenix Suns, governor of the Phoenix Suns, Matt Ishmael. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.